Okay, so the new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer is now out, and in this video, I want to break down the Easter eggs, hidden details, new characters, and what we know about the movie. We're not messing around with a long intro as usual, and I want to get straight into it by firstly discussing the poster that was released online yesterday. They show Deadpool's fingers touching Wolverine's claws, which was clearly playing off the original Logan poster. On top of that, we got a trailer for the trailer for the trailer that showed montage clips of Wolverine. This was done in the same style as the Endgame teaser, which too had footage turned black and white to show the sort of direction stuff was going. They play the audio from the first post credit scene of Deadpool 2, and it's finally bringing that tease of a team up to culmination. I really feel like this is going to be the endgame for the Fox universe, and it'll be a send-off to the franchise which started all the way back in 2000. Back then, you couldn't smash the like and subscribe to your favourite YouTubers, but now you can. You can even subscribe to the crap ones as well, so you know what to do, mate. Time to be YouTube Jesus. Now, all this new, new, new Jackman stuff has come with a new synopsis. After some professional disappointments and an ongoing midlife crisis, Wade Wilson now sells used cars. He's completely hung up his boots until his family, friends, and a whole world are threatened. With everyone he loves at risk, DP teams up with a reluctant Wolverine to fight for their survival and ultimately their legacy. So that's where we begin, with the first trailer of course confirming that we're starting on Wade's birthday. To make matters worse, Vanessa's no longer with him, which we have confirmed by the CinemaCon footage. I will talk about what happened and all that just a bit, but there's a lot of things we need to break down in the trailer. I told you, you're not welcome here. You're not welcome anywhere. Now get the fuck out of my bar. Just give me one more drink and then I'll leave. Hi, Peanut. I'm gonna need you to come with me right now. Look, lady, I'm not interested. All right, well, I'm sort of on the tick tick, so upsy daisy. Here we go. Oh, hey, hey. oh, whiskey dick of the claws. It's quite common in Wolverines over 40. You don't want this. Unless you want to take a deep breath through your fucking forehead, I suggest you reconsider. Now we begin with Wolverine in a bar, in a scene that's akin to lots of his appearances in the Fox franchise. At the end of the Wolverine, he was drinking to forget, and he also cameoed in one during First Class. Wolverine was of course introduced during that cage fight, and that also happened in a bar. I was thinking this might be Sisters Margaret's School for Wayward Girls, which is the bar that constantly pops up in Deadpool. However, looking behind the bar, we can see a Canadian flag, and thus this clearly paints out that it isn't in fact that. Wolverine himself is of course Canadian, and it's nice we've got these two Canadian icons meeting at this place. We can also see Deadpool's gun has some writing on it that says smile and wait for the flash, which is something we saw during the James Bond-esque opening of Deadpool 2. Wolverine is basically responsible for destroying his universe, and the way the bartender acts here, it makes me think that they might be doing something that happened in Old Man Logan. Mysterio hypnotised him, and he killed the X-Men, and thus he's clearly down on his luck and feeling like he's ruined everything. Deadpool arrives and he says, look lady, I'm not interested, which is a nice little line, but he implies that he's on the tick tick, which I'm guessing is because he's working for the TVA. Duking it out, we see Wolverine has limp claws, which is also something that happened at the start of Logan. This is why Deadpool says it happens a lot to Wolverine's over 40s, as that movie of course had him as an older man. In the background, we can also hear Like a Prayer by Madonna, as this is of course bringing our prayers to life. Been praying for Hugh Jackman to be the MCU for so long, and it was so good seeing him get focused in this trailer. Deadpool's world is ending, and we see flashes of this as Logan's clearly down and out. Now that takes us into the CinemaCon footage, which kind of explained all the birthday stuff, and I thought for the next part of the video, I'd go about what happened in that, so you kind of get an idea of exactly what's going on. Huge shoutouts to CostyPat257 on Reddit for compiling all the different sources and putting it together so I can come in and steal it. Ha ha ha, got it. Now they said, Captain America The Winter Soldier music begins playing in the background. The real start of Wade and his new job is a used car salesman working alongside Rob Delaney's Peter. Rob Delaney and Ryan Reynolds have worked together on a lot of stuff, with Peter of course also popping up in that second film. We catch Wade sitting in the back of a car that he's trying to sell to a family, in between the family's two young kids as the parents are taking it for a test drive. Wade swears a lot, at apparently describing the car, and then jokes about not having kids himself. He says, not that I don't want to have kids, I just don't have a lot of vaginal sex. The family, offended, leave without purchasing it, and back at the locker rooms, Peter notices that Wade keeps his Deadpool suit there. He then suggests that he goes back to superheroing, but Wade exclaims, I'm done, and I'm fine with being done. He does admit though, is this a life I always imagined for myself? F no, we're keeping it PG-13. I can totally see why he feels left in the lurch as well, as it was all the way back in 2019 that Reynolds posted his visit to Marvel Studios. 
Guy's been high and dry for five years, with him being brushed to the side in favour of Faye's chore to get through. Now, now it was, some of it was good, wasn't it? Multiverse of Madness, actually quite like. One Division as well in Phase 4, so there you go. Now, the reel uncuts cuts to Peter and Wade riding their bikes back to Wade's apartment, which he shares with Blind Al. We're Deadpool, Peter tells him, which Wade disputes, and they see someone across the street who's there taking photos of them. They go into the apartment to see there's a big surprise party waiting for them with all of Deadpool's friends like Vanessa, Blind Al, Dopinder, Colossus, Negasonic, Yukio, and Shadowstar in attendance. I do kind of wonder if the Vanish is there as well, uh, but he does make a joke about the time travel shenanigans at the end of Deadpool 2. If this was five years ago, you'd all be dead, he joked. Some people have said that that's to do with the snap, but it's clearly because of the events of the second film. Now wait, they make small talk with all of them, and Shadowstar's not entertained by any of Dopinder's stories. Blind Al asks Wade about his sales, because she's getting quite impatient about waiting for money from him. She says, I pray every day that fire finds your body and finishes the job that God didn't have the nuts to do. Wade then asks Colossus if he's been binging anything, and he says he's been watching The Great British Bake Off. Negasonic and Yukio are still together, and Blind Al wants to do coke, but Wade says coke is the one thing Feige set is off limits. Wade then catches up with Vanessa, and while they're washing dishes, she reveals she's dating a guy from work called Dermot. She then jokes that he hasn't gotten her shot yet. Wade has left Sa before talking to the group, and he says it's been a challenging few years. He says, but I'm happy, and that's because of each and every one of you, and this is about how proud I am, how grateful I am to be standing in a room with every single person I love. I'm the luckiest man alive. He then makes a wish and blows out the candle. He wishes that people would subscribe to the channel. Now this is obviously the guy's birthday, with that stuff playing a part of the comics too. Deadpool's now 33 years old, with Rob Liefeld recently announcing that he's going to be putting the character to rest. Yes, he will be retiring him, it, it, he says so anyway, uh, but we'll see if that happens down the line. But either way, we've had birthday issues before, with Deadpool Nerdy 30 having his birthday on the cover. That was obviously celebrating 30 years, and he was joined by several other Marvel heroes. Now someone knocks at the door, and it's the TVA like we saw in that first trailer. The footage just kind of goes over that, and we learn the person who was taking photos before is actually the agent here to recruit him. At this point, he's then taken a paradox at the TVA, who explains he's in charge of protecting the sacred timeline, but Deadpool's abuse of it isn't why they called him in. So that debunks their theory time, as I thought it was because of the time travel, but nope, turns out they want him to be part of a greater universe. Multiple screens in the room turn on, and it shows some of the most iconic moments of the MCU. Paradox then tees up footage of Captain America on the screens, and Wade then salutes him. A clip of Thor hovering over Loki dying in Thor 2, then sees Deadpool replacing Loki, and Wade's terribly concerned and confused. He says, is that me? And asks Paradox, but he says, nope, that happens in a distant future. So one day cameo. Now Paradox asks, would you like to join a timeline that needs avenging? This is where the whole Marvel Jesus thing happens, with a suit up and that white glove as well. Wonder if that's actually a throw into Mickey Mouse, but we do learn that he also gets some adamantium katanas. So that's basically all the stuff that was shown in the CinemaCon footage, and a huge shout out to Costas Pat257 on Reddit for putting that all together. Thank you. Now from here we cut to the void and get a wide shot of the action scene that was shown in the first teaser. It's also laced throughout this one as well, and there's a couple of items there that you might notice from bigger things. The CN Tower's there, and we'll talk about that 20th Century Fox logo later on, as I have a theory about Paradox. Interlaced with this, we see a slightly younger Logan, and I'm wondering if it was Cassandra Nova who was behind what's going on here. She of course has psychic abilities, and I doubt they're going to bring in Mysterio, so I think that she's the one who is controlling his mind. Now Daniel RPK has explained how the rules of the timeline's fracturing work, and he put out a report going over everything. He said that in the multiverse, every Earth has a hero, that's basically the nexus being of its universe. When they're removed, that universe starts to decay, and over time it rots away and dies. I kind of think it's similar to when the Ancient One explained the Infinity Stones in Endgame, and it has big knock-on repercussions. Better hope this universe's hero isn't TJ Miller's character being removed, because dear me, that guy's never showing up again. Anyway, Deadpool is apparently going to be recruiting the main heroes of the multiverse, with them going after several different Wolverines. Along with Hugh Jackman's version, we're apparently going to be getting others with Daniel Radcliffe reportedly having a cameo. In what appears to be Madripoor, we can see the back of Wolverine, though this looks slightly different to Jackman's build, and many have speculated that it is indeed Radcliffe. 
This is Patch, which is a moniker he goes under, and he wears a white tux along with an eye patch. There's also rumours that Henry Cavill will be playing a version of him too, and that's a character that he's gonna run into in the movie. Kind of feels like they're doing what they did with Multiverse of Madness and using the fan casts as alternate versions of characters. John Krasinski was someone people wanted to see as Reed for so long, and thus we're getting these other fan casts as Wolverine. At this point, we see Paradox at the TVA, who explains that this Wolverine failed his universe. The movie's clearly taking place after the ascension of Loki to the TVA throne, and this leads me into a theory that I'm really getting excited for. Either way, though, Loki made it so they weren't going out and pruning timelines, and he was holding together everything that he could, even these failed universes. This also could explain why he's changing things and altering the Thor The Dark World from the CinemaCon footage. Either way, the totalitarian outlook they once had, that's no more. They're knocking at the door instead of barging in and also not putting the collar and jumpsuit on like we saw with Loki. He's not having to go through the trials and security that he did and it seems like a much nicer organisation. There's just the general design of the place as well which makes it seem more welcoming, though I do feel like there is a sinister undertone. Now in our initial breakdown, I thought it might be based off the She-Hulk issue in which she's put on trial for saving Hawkeye's life. In that She-Hulk was tried by the TVA and I thought it might play out how Deadpool saved Vanessa. However, Paradox is in fact here to recruit him and it was that comic that also introduced him. Paradox is not to be confused with Dox and in the comics he is a clone of Morbius. And that takes me into three time, three time, three time, go back in time to kill Hitler as a baby. Now I think that Dox might actually be trying to create an uprising in the TVA that turns it back to its old ways. MT did a breakdown on the channel talking about how he was the secret villain and I think that makes the most sense. Loki is beyond time and space now outside of the multiverse and perhaps that's why Paradox has recruited him. Deadpool can see the fourth wall and break it which could explain exactly what it is he wants for him. Potentially due to all the continuity errors in the original X-Men movies, the universe itself is starting to fall apart. This is why we see the 20th Century Fox logo down in the void as this is a place where that entire universe has been sent to. That has the X clearly visible and this is a motif the X-Men movies used to do a lot where they focus on that heavily in the intro. Perhaps Paradox needs him for more than he's letting on as it kind of seems like it's too good to be true. I think that at the birthday party when Wade made the wish, he really wanted to be Deadpool again and doing something important with his life. This is why the TVA knock happened at that exact moment. They needed to wait until he was at his lowest point and desperately wishing to get out of his life. They then take him in and promise he could be the messiah, which is pretty much the opposite end self esteem wise of how it is he was feeling. Wait, you are special. Paradox tells him he's special, which could be weaponizing the wish that he made at his birthday. Whether that's the case or not, we know that Deadpool turns on the TVA at one point, and in the trailer, he's been seen fighting against them. He also gets sent to the void too, which shows that he's been pruned at some point. I believe this might happen during the fighting shots in which we see him battling the TVA in the forest. He throws three daggers at them, which many have theorised might actually be Wolverine's claws. People have said this could be the forest where Logan dies and that this might also be where Daphne Keen cameos. However, there are also reports by Nexus Point News that Natalie Atenia will be playing an older version of her. That would be a pretty great cameo and definitely something I'd like to see in the movie. Either way, we did see a Secret Wars comic at the end of the first trailer and what if the Secret War was really going on at the TVA. Not only do you have Kang trying to control the multiverse, but you also have other entities like Paradox. His TVA might be a separate one completely and this could explain why it looks different. This might be him recruiting powerful characters for his war and Doctor Doom could also be out there too which could also lead into Secret Wars. We have to get to a point where Kang Dynasty can happen, as it is still a movie that's apparently on Marvel's slate. They have Michael Waldron currently writing it, and there's something bad's gotta happen to the TVA. So personally, I think that's the way they're gonna take things, with the TVA being disabled in this movie. One of the many people after the multiverse could then rise up, and then set the stage for the coming of Secret Wars. Either way, that's in a few time, few time, a few time, few time. At this point, we get the pair walking through the streets, and Wolverine is sleeveless. So nice actually getting this look, cause I know when the first costume dropped, a lot of people were confused. However, I'm loving the sleeveless look, you know, that's more in line with the comics, and yeah, it's nice that they're finally embracing this. Now speaking of embracing things, one of the signs also says Liefeld, <laughs> right beside it. <laughs> Sorry guys. 
it says just feet. Now, in case you don't know, Rob Liefeld is the guy who created Deadpool, and he's often been criticised for not being able to draw feet. So having just feet, yeah, it's a nice little touch, and it just it killed me seeing this pop up in the trailer. In the background, we also have Copperheads, which could be a nod to the Serpent Society. They're villains who are rumoured to be in Captain America 4, and it'll be interesting to see if they bring them into this. Now, at this point, we get Cassandra Nova, who's coming out of an Ant-Man head. Or a giant man head, I should say for that. Huge shout outs to MT for pointing out that since Cassandra Nova's the dark opposite of Xavier, her being inside a giant Ant-Man skull is sort of her version of Cerebro. Like a dead Cerebro, she she's in Scott's Cerebellum, and there's also a little nod to Ant-Man earlier in the teaser. Deadpool calls Wolverine Pina, which is also a cute affectionate thing that Scott Lang calls his daughter. Hoping that Ant-Man cameos in this as well, and we can see his skull beneath the mask. Now Cassandra Nova will be played by Emma Corrin, and she's gonna be the big bad of the movie. If it's not also secretly Paradox, eh? Now in case you don't know, she's actually Professor X's evil twin, who was first introduced during Grant Morrison's new X-Men run. Born without a body, she used Charles' DNA, and acted like a parasite to help make her own. Eventually she got to the point where she was powerful enough to attack Charles, but he blasted her psychically, which then seemingly killed her. Their mother then ended up having a miscarriage, but Cassandra's consciousness remained. Disposed of, she lay low in the sewers and rebuilt herself from all the things dumped in there. After decades, she became a fully formed human and then went on a path to get revenge on Charles. She's someone who believes that the world isn't real and that she and Charles have created the universe in their minds. I can't wait to see what they do with her in the movie, as she's such an amazing character to have pop up in the film. In the comics, she attacked Genosha with a wild sentinel, which is also something we've seen happen in X-Men 97. We have lots of different theories about who could be behind that, but hey, maybe they're just having Cassandra show up in them both. I feel like that series is going to have someone different, but having her set up to appear here too, I think would be pretty cool. Now amongst these little shots, we also see Dogpool and Elioth who's returning from the void. That makes me wonder if Renslayer is coming back, and when we last seen her, she seemed to be face to face with the beast, but we cut things before they went any further. I did theorise at the time the pyramids we saw could belong to Ramatad, and that she may have been found out there in the wasteland. However, I wonder if she potentially tamed the beast, and is now part of this attack. I feel like the convoy we see could be trying to capture a lyeth, and then using this as a weapon to help control the void. We see this convoy are using scraps from alternate timelines, and saw them moving around. Amongst the rides were the Red Skull's car, the Moon Knight truck, and the Fantastic Four car. They also have what I think are sonic weapons, and have metal circular cages, which could be filled with someone to lure the beasts in. It's just a theory, and it's something I've been thinking about, but I think they could be led by Nova, or possibly led by Pyro. I kind of feel like he's going to be working for Nova himself, uh, but either way, your boy is back, and we know from the teasers he's wearing his ultimate suit from the comics. Other callbacks are the Golden Gate Bridge, which appeared in X-Men The Last Stand. There's also been Hulk's bed from Thor Ragnarok, and I'd love to see Wolverine finally fighting the Hulk. That would be such a big thing to have kickstart his MCU appearance, as Wolverine's debut appearance was battling against the Hulk. Other cameos we know are Tyler Mayne as Sabretooth, and Toad will be popping up as well. On top of this, we have rumours that Jennifer Garner will be returning as Elektra, and she crumbled a bit under questioning in an interview with Collider. Went over that in the first breakdown, so don't just want to repeat it, but yeah, head over to that if you want to see the clip. Either way, it's pretty clear she's probably in the movie, and I'd love to see stuff like the Fox Fantastic Four, and so on and so forth. Alongside this, we have some other X-Men characters, including Azazel, and also Lady Deathstrike. Now, Swifties should assemble, because if your pieces of shit have been listening to the new Taylor Swift album, then you'll know that she ends the entire thing with the word dazzling. Had it on at the weekend to double check, and what a bloody banger. A couple of months though, we reported on the singer playing Dazzler and Deadpool, and this was backed up by a couple of things. What do you mean you've hit dislike for that comment? Either way, Reynolds and Taylor are good friends in real life, with his daughter providing vocals on her song Gorgeous. He also wore a t-shirt in the second movie with her cats on it, and they hang out all the time at the NFL, I, I think. Not sports spoilers, mate. If it is the- I know it is the NFL, yeah, but don't ask me what happened, because I was breaking down the first trailer when the Super Bowl was on, and I didn't get to see any of it. Either way, ending it with Dazzling had fans speculating she'd play her in the movie, and yeah, that would be a cool little easter egg that would lead into this. Now, if you like cat t-shirts, then you might also like other t-shirts, so definitely check out our merch store right below the video. We've got It's All Connected ones that reference your favourite boy tying everything together, a massive moment from X-Men 97 that we've just dropped, 
Theory Time shirts, and yeah, lots of different t-shirts that you should definitely go check out. It all goes towards helping videos like this get made, and huge thank you to everyone who's picked one up. Now upon escaping the head, we also see a Doctor Strange portal hinting to me that he might pop up in the movie. However, I think more likely it's going to be Wong, as he's a character who pretty much pops up in everything. It's Wong's shared universe now. Now Vanessa's return could usher in her role as copycat, as she's who the character eventually ends up becoming. They initially wanted to go that route for the first movie, but unfortunately the story, they didn't have enough there to really pad it out. Now in case you don't know, Copycat's a shapeshifter who's similar to Mystique's able to change her appearance. There was a line in the trailer for the first film that originally had her saying she's played a number of different roles. However, this was removed for the final cut with them then wanting to do it in the second film. That was when Tim Miller was attached to it, but due to creative differences, he ended up leaving. We then got the time travel plot, and thus they didn't have time to really do anything with Copycat. Marina Baccarin did say she felt she might have been a victim of fridging, but the ending did change things, so she was saved by the end. Would love to see Copycat finally get to shine though, and yeah, that's a big direction to take the character to. Now some of my thoughts on the movie, really excited as I'm sure you can tell, and I can't wait to see it when it releases in July. After X-Men 97, I'm confident Marvel's able to handle the X-Men at the level they should, and I can't wait to see what's their first film coming together under the Marvel Studios banner. This trailer looks like it's going to be something special, and a celebration of the Fox franchise that we never really properly got to say goodbye to. I can remember going to see X-Men in the cinema at 11, and I was blown away by just how good it was. It's often overlooked as a trendsetter, and though there were other comic book movies before it, I think this was a massive milestone in how things came to develop. I'm still a bit in shock that it's all happening, but yeah, the hype meter, it's building in my cold dead heart. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed us going through it, and let me know below if there's any other major things we missed. I did try and skip around stuff that we'd already covered before, because this video is going to be like 2 hours long, and I've just done an hour 20 minute breakdown on June, which has killed me. So yeah, if there's anything that was in the first trailer that we didn't cover here, then it's probably going to be in our first trailer breakdown. Either way, thank you for watching until this point, and yeah, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Please drop a like on the video, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. We get early access to videos every week, and it goes a massive way to helping videos like this get made. If you want something else to watch, we've got that June breakdown on screen right now, so if you've got an hour 20 to kill, or just watch it over a couple of weeks, and yeah, definitely head over there right after this. Without the way, thank you for sitting through the breakdown. I've been your host, Paul. You've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.